Hey, y'all. What's going on, guys? I'm Jay. And I'm Krista Bertner. And we, we are, are the Bird Brains. All right. <laughs> Back at it again. Let's do it. <laughs> so uh, we've gotten some good listener suggestions lately, uh, topics, or we've had some things come up. Um, and I think Chris, you said you're good. You've had some people reach out from the, the great North. Yeah. We've had quite a few people of the great North and, and even just the Northern United States, uh, asking, uh, what recommendations that, that I could give them as far as finches that are hardy, uh, in the wintertime and, and can withstand a great deal of cold temperatures. So we thought that maybe we'd hit that topic today, Jay, and, provide a few species that, that we would recommend in the finch world, maybe dive into the smaller parakeet world since we both have some of those species and their hardiness and what we'd recommend. All right. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. Bird Brains, Bird Brains. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. The Bird Brains Podcast with Chris and Jay. Bird Brains, Bird Brains. Before we do that, let's talk about our sponsor, New Zealand, helping us out. Um, Chris has figured out. I can't figure out how to make it make sound, but if you go to their website and you use code BIRDBRAINS, you'll get 10% off. They've got seed. They've got even stuff for big birds. Uh, they've got uh, the perch box. we got the uh, bird brains perch box coming eventually. we got to talk to them a little bit more about that and get it yeah. solidified. I'm going to, I'm, while we're talking, I'm looking to see what's up there now. I haven't looked in a few days. I was going to say, it's been about a week and a half since I've been on there. I've been out of town, but, um, I know we've been making some pretty big headway with some new products that they're trying to get into their catalog, mostly geared toward the finch species. Uh, so yeah, hopefully Jay, some of that's been updated and we're getting closer and closer. I know we've talked about it the last several podcast about the bird brains box but we're hoping that we're we're getting closer as we speak to rolling that out and, and making that available to everyone with some pr- pretty cool items to, to choose from and, and receive each month yeah and i see on here the finch mix the budgie mix and they've got the 20 pound bags on there too for nice the the finch mix is only 55 dollars on the website which that's not that's below retail. So get over there, get some seed, use code bird brains, get 10% off helps us to help you. Yeah. All right. Speaking of helping people, cold weather birds. Um, I'll, I'll start by saying this. You're all North to me, right? South of me (laughs) is Cuba. Um, I love living where I live because I don't have to worry as much about this. Uh, I do get a couple cold nights a year, but I don't get anything like what Chris, you're already getting freezing temps, aren't you? Yeah, we had this just this weekend. We got down to 28 degrees in the evening time and a high of 43. That's what it was. Yeah. This week's getting a little bit warmer. We're getting highs in the sixties, but then starting Monday, we're back down highs of forties, lows of upper twenties. So and I do have the covers on my aviary now. I think for the for the Africans and the the tropical finches, so like your Australians, your Africans, I try not to let them go below about sixty. And yeah. I really I try to keep them high seventies, eighties. Uh, this is all Fahrenheit. So if you're listening and you're a Celsius person, uh, I think mid twenties to low thirties <laughs> is where you want to be. Yeah, I'm terrible with the um, Celsius piece, so I'll leave that to you, Jay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not that much better at it. Um but I know that I don't know, right? But uh as far as I know uh, what a lot of people do up north is they have like a either they have a heated aviary which is really expensive or they have a like a part time aviary. So in the summer, kinda like what, what yeah. uh you do, Chris, is the birds go outside and 
you know, use the aviary when the temperatures make sense. And then when it gets uh-huh. too cold, eventually they'll, they'll bring everybody inside. Yeah. And, and, and I want to highlight Jay, a couple species that, that truly are, I feel like cold hardy birds, uh, that, you know, if you have an outdoor cage and that's what you have, uh, they probably would do okay. And then, and then maybe some species that kind of live in that hybrid system of what I have right now of they can choose to be out in the cold or into a warmer shed and, and still be okay, but maybe aren't necessarily a hundred percent cold hardy, but we can acclimatize them and, and break, bring them through. Most of my birds that I have currently are because I have cold winters. I have to be selective in what birds that, that I keep and, and how I keep them just because we have crazy cold winters and I want to stay married to my wife. So I don't have them inside the house. And so I'm trying to compromise <laughs> in that area as well. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off Jay. Um, and, and I'll preface this with majority of your really cold hardy species, unfortunately are your less colorful ones. I think that's, um, really what it comes down to a lot of your tropical birds, come with vibrant colors and because they live in the jungle right really nice warm temperatures year round so a lot of your really cold hardy birds aren't necessarily the most beautiful birds that you would want to have but i think they've got winds in other areas so the first one and i'm sure everyone's probably guessed it is your zebra finch those birds are extremely cold hardy and and when we say cold hardy jay i also want to preface um, you know, we need to acclimatize them. Humans are the same way, right? If you live in a tropical area, you can't just suddenly go live in a sub freezing temperature climate and expect to be okay, right? You got to acclimatize to those, to the weather changes and it's no different for the birds. So I'm, so I'm, I'm not saying because the zebra finch is my number one for cold hardiest birds, you can't just all of a sudden throw them outside in freezing temperatures and expect it to survive the night. You, you do need to acclimatize them and, and be smart, create environments where they're protected from the wind and the rain. Uh, that's snow, what I was going to say. You know, the big thing like is the wind break. Yeah. Gotta have and, a wind break. Yeah. And, you know, but growing up, we had our, our zebra finches out in the back with my dad's aviary and legit, the water bowls were frozen in, in the mornings when I would go and feed them, mm-hmm. you know, so it's, it's cold and we had plastic around, so they were being protected from that wind, but temps were still getting below freezing inside the bird shed and the zebra finches, they, they took it like a champ and ended really well. Uh, and I don't ever remember a whole lot of birds ever dying throughout the winter time and, um, due to the cold at least. And so, uh, yeah, zebra finches would be my number one. They're not the pretty ones. They got the gray, gray bird syndrome, but they have a lot of other positives as far as activity goes and entertainment and uh, can still bring quite a lot of life to your aviary or outdoor cage if you have one. So, Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, and there are some, you, I watched your latest video talking about the orange zebras and I've got some chestnut flank whites that are really pretty. You can find yeah. pretty zebra finches. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I do think, I mean, I, th- I, I don't like, gray bird syndrome i acknowledge that it exists but i think they're all pretty but yeah so um and then also some of this too we should say is going to depend on where you live and what you can get so like uh torben uh whose last name i can't remember but who lives in uh europe so he has like uh here's a bird if you're european i don't think canadians can get these either but if you're in europe same thing colder uh, like red cardinals, like the American mm-hmm. cardinal, which is a native bird for us and thus illegal for us to own. Really pretty, beautiful red bird. Uh, lo- on the larger I side, they're in the t- they're in the titmouse yeah. family, the tit family. Um, but uh, they do they can live in a mixed aviary with the right cohabitants, and they are incredibly pretty. So if you're in Europe, a pair of cardinals would uh, would definitely be on my list. My uh, my. One of my older brothers, he lives in Virginia, and he sent me pictures of cardinals out in their backyard. Man, things are beautiful. Yo, I guess you don't have them out west, yeah, because they're eastern. No, so don't. yeah. I've never seen them. a cardinal in real life. We get them big time. There, There's pairs that live in my in my yard. I mean, I've got video, if you go way back on my Instagram, of a cardinal fighting his reflection in my wife's car mirror for like an hour. 
Um, and they're, they have a pretty song too. Um, and the hens are not as pretty. They're more Brown, but they do have like an orange beak. They're, they're cool looking too. And, um, but all right. So, so that's mine. That would be mine. If you're in Europe or somewhere where it's legal, get a, get a, a Northern Cardinal is what they're actually called. I love that. That's, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll stick to the finch species and then I've got a couple others that are, technically outside of the, the finch species, but are smaller birds and I think are, are readily available throughout the world. So my next one would be a society finch. Those are really hardy birds, uh, both temperature wise and just overall general health wise. I think they're, you, we just did an episode on society finches, Jay. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, go back. I believe it's episode 50 or 52, one of those. And we talk about how great society finches are. And one of the things that we highlight is the, their cold hardiness or their uh, hardiness towards any type of health concerns and uh, warm or cold temperatures. They do a great job there. So my society finches, the moment the sun's up, they're out in the aviary playing. Doesn't matter if it's still below freezing, if it's snowing, they're out there playing, eating the snow. If it's raining, they're out there taking a bath, (laughs) cold or hot, you know? So, uh, they seem to be intolerant uh, or indifferent to the different temperature swings and, and, and are always happy in singing and dancing around and exploring every inch of the space that I provide to them. So, yeah, society finches would be that. And those should be, for the most part, readily available. I think worldwide. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think those are a pretty common bird that, that you guys should be able to find. Yeah. Okay. Another one uh, is the the European or some or sometimes the Siberian goldfinch. Um, the name Siberian should give away where they're from. They're they are from Northern Europe, um, and they're a little bit bigger. They're about a canary sized bird, and they also have a reputation for sometimes being a little on the aggressive side. But they do have some yellow, some red, and some black coloring that's very pretty. Uh, they have a beautiful song. So if I was in a cold weather situation where I really couldn't bring birds inside, that that would definitely, I would have a lot of those birds. Yeah. And going along with that species, what I was going to say, Jay, Jay, is the canaries. So you got your European, your Siberian, Siberian goldfinch, European goldfinch, and canaries. I would say all three of those subspecies do well in colder temperatures in fact yeah, down, my, to, down to freezing easily yeah 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 easily and you know the canary islands it's a it's a, a cooler weather climate uh you know it's not it's not tropical but it's not <laughs> it's mediterranean antarctica yeah. right yeah but they can get some cold temperatures and which are where you know majority of our canaries originate from my canaries in fact almost like my spring and fall temperatures, which are your 60 to 78 degree temps, you know, on average throughout the day, they're more active in those temperatures than they are when it's the middle of the summer. They don't tend to do extreme heat very well. They're, if you, it's too hot, you'll see them down in a corner somewhere on the cage, trying to get a, a, a cool of a spot as you possibly can. In the wintertime, I've legit seen mine take baths in the snow. They they love it. They they explore it. They seem to get excited in those cooler weather climates. I've had them sleep outside during the winter in my aviary. I, I still give my birds an option if they want to be out in the aviary or come in. And most of them are smart enough to know they feel when the weather is cooler and they choose to sleep inside the bird shed where it's warm. But lots of times my canaries will, will sleep outside and don't seem to mind the cold much at all. So uh, that would be my my addition to, to what you had, had mentioned with the, the goldfinches. Uh, button quail. Uh, button quail, not a flying bird, but an aviary bird. Great. We've done an episode on them. Great aviary bird. And uh, the, yeah, down to below freezing, especially if you have a gaggle of them, they all, they just kind of get in a big warm pile at night, um, which maybe I'll try to get a picture of it sometime, but they basically, it's really cute. They all just sleep with their butts together, like in a circle for safety and for warmth. And yep. um, so, yeah, they, they've got no problem with temperature as long as they're acclimated, they can easily go cold. My, uh, my kids they're they love the movie crudes. And anytime mm-hmm. they see my button quells line up in that circle, they always call it a kill circle. Cause that's, that's what they do in the crudes movie. So um, they always, <laughs> 
they would say, Dad, the button crawler are in a kill circle. <laughs> Which, <laughs> you know, that's yeah. a common animal thing. You know, elephants will do that, right? And water uh, buffalo. There's a lot of animals that when faced with potential danger, they all just make a, you know, it's like almost like the Roman thing. Like they just make a circle with their shield, with their, you know, the mean part out. And yeah, hopefully they all can make it. They, you know, they work together as a team. It's cool to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just getting over a cold. So if I cough, I apologize. But my next one, so we're kind of jumping out of the finch species, going up into the parakeet species a little bit, uh, the borks. They, my borks do really well in cold temperatures. My, my one male that I've had for, so he's one of the first males that I've gotten. He's probably seven years old. Um, the last two years, I haven't had my aviary outside, but when I lived at my old place, I had the aviary out there, and he would sleep out there every night. There were a few nights where I almost just went out and caught him and brought him into the shed because it was, you know, supposed to snow all night, be below freezing temperatures, and I wouldn't, and I'd go back out there, and he would still be alive and be just as happy hanging out there in the in the, the snow. He would be one of my only birds besides the canaries that, truly spent most of the day outside when it was cold instead of opting to be in in the warmer shed he really really enjoyed that and i've noticed that with most of my borks they they almost are a little bit more active in the cooler temperatures um and do really well in it so i would recommend and and they do good borks are great for an indoor bird and an outdoor bird they they don't need a ton of space requirements. I would recommend going as big as possible, as always, with any of your birds. But they are a really good option for color and a quiet bird and one that's cold hardy. And they're a little bit more available um, throughout the world. And for, for the most part, you may have to reach out to maybe some different states or whatnot within your country but to, to see if you have breeders. But for the most part, I've I've heard that people can typically readily access borks of some kind uh, where they're at, but that would be a really good option for a cold hardy bird and also a colorful, pretty one too. Yeah. And in, in, in that same realm, uh, the parakeet world also really colorful and pretty is budgies. Uh, not necessarily a great mixed aviary bird, but if you were another thing I would consider doing if I was in a cold climate would just be having a big budgie aviary. Yeah. So they can live with other budgies fine. Uh and you get all kinds of crazy colors. They're not that difficult to breed. They're very, very hardy. Uh they don't care about weather really at all. Uh yeah. raining, they're gonna play in the rain, dry, they're fine. Temperature they're fine. Hot they're fine. Cold they're fine. So uh, budgies would be another one for me that no problem. Yeah. All right. I got one more. You got one more. Um, I don't have any, any more. So do your last one. And then I'll kind of talk about some of your subspecies, your, your mid hardy species real quick, and then we can wrap up. So diamond doves would be my last oh, one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. super hardy, super, super hardy. Um, I've never, I mean, knock on wood, but I've, I have not had a diamond dove dive anything but old age ever. <laughs> um, not even like animal attack or any, I mean, just nothing. Um, they're super hardy. They're good looking bird. They've got all kinds of mutations. I've got one that's like a red cinnamon. Uh, they're easy to breed. They're sweet. They get along. They can hold their own with the bigger birds, but they also get along with the smaller birds. Uh, the only downside to them is they're just really dumb. So they get, you know, trapped by a window and stuff like that for a long time. But just sit there for an hour and try to fly through the glass. Can't figure out I've, why they can't get through. I've noticed that with the pair of diamond doves that you sent me, Jay. I find myself just smiling as I watch them because they truly are in their own separate world. Even though they're part of the mixed aviary, it's like you have your aviary birds and they kind of function as a community. And then you have the diamond doves. They're just like the dodo bird of the aviary clan, you know, and just, <laughs> they make me laugh. I, they're beautiful birds. I love the, I love watching the male court the female and hearing their coos. So 
they are a great addition. But yeah, they're they're they they're kind of goofy and dumb. You know, they sure. they <laughs> they say about like pen raised turkeys for like for people for eating that you have to keep their cage covered because otherwise when it rains, they'll drown because they'll look up and hold their mouth open and drown. <laughs> Diamond doves aren't that dumb, but they're close. <laughs> they we are in. close. Quick story, and then I'll, I'll I'll share my last piece. We went into the pet store the other day to get some uh, crickets and roaches for my, my boy's bearded dragon. And all of a sudden, come, this lady walks in, and she's carrying a white turkey. Like full grown full size turkey she's it's sitting in like a like a dog pad or pillow you know that sometimes the dogs will sleep in mm-hmm. and she's sitting there and she's just carrying it through the pet store it was like her pet i was just like wow i was like i wouldn't have expected a big old giant turkey as your pet there, coming through the pet store <laughs> there are show turkeys that are big money too so i i used to actually i've gotten some button quail from this guy in south alabama that Used to also buy seed in bulk from him, and he um, he told me one time I needed some button quail. I said, "Oh, just go get go get some." And I knew where they were in his. He had this incredible little pole barn and everything that was just. He had like button quail. He had all different kinds of chickens. He had uh, like court new quail, bob whites. But he had some show turkeys, and these suckers are big. I mean, they're bigger than a dog. And I don't know if they had chicks or what, but I went to get these button quail and they were kind of to get to the button quail. I had to look this way and they were there up on yeah. top of some cages and the male was just making this like angry noise. And I was pretty scared. <laughs> I'm, I like, I told my mom like, Hey, if I don't make it out of here, you know, you know, here's where I am. She said, are you worried about the guy? Like, no, he's super nice. It's these turkeys. These turkeys have, have it out for me. We we went to a little pumpkin patch with my kids the other day, and usually they're on farms, you know, and, and they had mm-hmm. a big turkey pen, and they had a couple toms and a few hens in there, and my oldest daughter's there, and the toms all had their fe- their tails fanned out, you know, and they're puffed up, and they're kind of doing their little strut, and I, I've got I've got a pretty good little turkey call, and I told my daughter, I'm like, watch, I'm going to make them gobble. So we sat there, and I did a few hen calls, and they came right up to the fence, and and I turned to my daughter and said, three, two, one, both of them on cue. Woo! <laughs> so I kind of scared my daughter. She's like, how did you do that? I'm like, yeah. So you ha- what you do when you're hunt- hunting them, so. <laughs> <laughs> I speak but, turkey. Yeah, it was pretty good. But um, back, to the, back to the subject. So just my last thing, Jay. You can't, you know, the birds that we mentioned, they're, they're cold hardy birds. Uh, like, you, like we said earlier, climatize them appropriately, give them the right conditions, and they'll do fine, and they'll do just well. You can get some of, into some of the birds that, that I have, right? I have the dual climate. I can get really hot temperatures, and I can get really cold temperatures throughout the year. Your Goulian finches, I've got parrot finches, several different African species um, that can be cold sensitive uh, especially in extreme temperatures so having like what jay had mentioned earlier uh, a dual housing situation where they can go outside into an aviary or into a cage that when it's nice temperatures and then they can come back into a, a heated or secure area when the temperatures are too cold or too hot so giving them the option to self climatize there or if it means just bringing them into the house. If you don't have an option for an outdoor aviary, you can do that. So there are options to keep some of the, the more colorful and trop- tropical birds. You just have to put forth a, a few more additional resources just to make sure that they are either warm enough or uh, not too cold in in your summers or winters. And so, um, <clears throat> but yeah, so there's options there that you can explore and, and, and give the birds an outdoor, indoor aviary or cage, et cetera so that you can have some of those other species. Just be cautious and aware. You know, in Utah, our spring and falls, we get major temperature swings, right? So today, was our high was 67. Just yesterday, our high was 48, right? And, you know, same for same for the low. Tough so on a bird. Just, yeah, yeah it, it really is tough on a bird and, and trying to acclimatize to that. And so that's where you have to be sensitive and, and more cautious around some of those tropical birds or, or less cold tolerant birds. So there's options there. It still can happen, but just be careful. So that, that would be we have a, to you. 
climate control episode. Yeah. Um, and we do, we're going to do a winter prep episode here shortly as well. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll address some of that side of it, but if you're someone that's looking for colder, hardier birds, that's a pretty good list. You could have a pretty awesome aviary off of that list. Yeah. And, and all of those birds should be fairly readily available throughout the world where you're at. Maybe, you know, maybe a couple like the Borks, or if you want like a specific kind of canary or or european finch you may have to look a little bit more there but your zebras your society finches your budgie parakeets i mean all of those are are readily available or should be for the most part throughout most of the world so hopefully you wouldn't have too much difficulty finding those all right chris if they have a bird question about a cold temp bird where could they find you so the best place to reach out to me is on Instagram, and that's Bird Nerd Four. Uh, lately, I've had quite a few people asking questions on Facebook and YouTube, which is great. Please do keep doing that, and most of the time, I redirect to Instagram uh, just because that's the easiest platform for me to respond and maybe provide personal information or or things like that for your birds without the whole world seeing it. Um, if if you want it to to be a little bit more private, but uh, still reach out to me on YouTube and Facebook. Those are both bird nerd and uh, same logo, same thing. So please continue to reach out to me. Appreciate it. I've actually had a few new, uh, viewers and followers reach out these last couple of weeks, interested in both birds and questions about birds that they have. So, uh, super exciting. Appreciate that. And thank you guys. How about you, Jay? How can they get a hold of you? Yes. I've had some new people reach out too, including, uh, including Bob. So I, I finally <laughs> talked to Chris's <laughs> other bird brother. Pretty exciting. Um, you can find me on YouTube. Obviously I'm on Instagram, uh, J or the underscore Javieri on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Reddit. Uh, and I'm on threads, which sucks. So yeah. Uh, thanks to New Zealand. Thanks uh, y'all for listening and we'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.